Hey guys, this is Be Outside again, hitting you guys up with another video. Sorry it's been so long since I've uploaded, about three or four weeks ago. Um, just been kind of busy with this project. It's been taking a long time to do because I couldn't really figure out how to do stuff, uh, do how to expand the tubing for the shock sleeve. But you may be encountering the same issue as me, um, where the shock body you're wearing, the spring divider is wearing through the shock body. It's a pretty common issue, and most people just replace the shock body. But I really don't want to want to spend three hundred dollars on a new shock body. So this this is a solution. It's not really it's not a band aid. It is a permanent thing where you should put th thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands. You know, a lot of miles on this before it wears through. Um, probably 12,000 miles, I don't know, something, a very, very long time, but this is gonna, this is gonna fix your issue, um, so, uh, yeah, let's get into the video. Okay, guys, so this is the setup I have here, we're using a hydraulic cylinder with a pump there to pump the cylinder. Um, so here I'll kind of explain what's going on. I didn't get any clips of um, me actually expanding the pipe, but I wanted to kind of show you guys what I did here. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but if you guys got the time and you got the machinery to do it, um, I would go ahead and do this unless you will have somebody else do it if they have the stuff or whatever. Um, but so basically what I did here is that I have these um, nuts we had to machine them down because the nut was crooked because these are big and these don't really need to be precise or anything because it's big, a big all thread there. Um, we machined two of them. So basically, one nut goes here, about on the um, on the all thread, of course. Um, and then the other one goes about right uh, right here or whatever around here. There's a gap there. And then you'll have a uh, one of the mandrels right here um, and then you'll use the previous size down for uh, on, in the front of it so like if you're running the first one through you'll go 61 right here and then uh, 62 here and you'll tighten them together so they'll get tight and that'll basically act as a guide um, the cylinder I'm using here um, the bore is bigger than this obviously uh, it's bigger than this so we ended up making these um, small spacers here. Sorry, I'm going to grab it real quick. It's a little stuck in there. Um, so we made these out of like a plastic stuff. I forget what it's called, but any type of plastic will work or metal. Um, we used this, and it fits perfectly inside the bore here. And we made two of them. So there's one for that side, and then there's one for this side right here, uh, as you guys can see there. Um, and then the all thread basically goes all the way through here. So it goes all the way to here. Um, and then you put this plate on and then one of the nuts. That nut does not need to be machined down because it um, doesn't really matter because it can be kind of crooked or whatever. Um, then basically you uh, use the pump over there. You pump this uh, up. This In my case, this is a 4-inch stroke. And um, we'll, uh, on this side, the nut will push it all. It will release all the pressure off the uh, with that. And then... Um, You'll uh, screw the nut down with that plate, and then you'll uh, go ahead and pump it again until it bottoms out. When you bottom it out, we take the all thread out, and there's still a nut on, I believe it's this end we used. Uh, there's still a nut there, and you can just kind of jam it out. Just hit it on a piece of metal or something, and jam it out, and it'll come out pretty precise. Um, so that's what we did there. Um, that is it. That's the whole setup for this thing. Not too, not too, too complicated. It's a bit, it's kind of a pain in the butt, but, yeah, you gotta get, you, it's hard to expand tubing like we want to. It's not like we're doing a coupler for the, for an exhaust or anything. Um, so, here, I'll show you guys the product here. We have the product, to the finished product here. Um, so this is it. It's very straight, as you guys can see. If I could show you there. There's like, there's no curve to it. It's a little hard to tell on camera, but... It, there's no curve, if, if you trust me there. Um, there's no curve to it. It's like, it's everything straight. There's no um, lumpiness. So that's all good. Um, these will these are going to be a uh, pressure, uh, press fit, sorry, on the shock body. So you can see here, um, I'll show you what kind of where I'm going against and why I'm 
doing these uh, shock sleeves here. So, you can see here, there's some regular minimal wear there. I don't want to get grease on it, so let me wipe that off. Um, you can see right there, it's hard to tell on camera. I'll put up a picture right here. And also, I can kind of try to show you here. So, you can see right there, there's a bit, there's a big dip there. Um, I assume this happened because um, of this right here on the shock, um, what do you call this, shock divider, or spring divider, sorry. Um, that got really thin and started rubbing kind of weird, and so that's how it happened. I was not replacing these because I was, yeah, I just didn't want to replace them. I didn't want to take the shocks apart. Um... But uh, now that I'm doing it, I got a fresh new pair. Uh, there's, here's one of them right here. You can see see how much thicker that is compared to the old one. So th these are OEM. Just bought them off of Babbitt's Parts online and got a, a pretty good uh, pretty good price there. Um, so yeah, that's the wear I'm against here. Um, I'm assuming that this shock right here. Sorry, I'm getting a little off topic here, but I'm assuming this shock here. You can see this is uh, black. And then the color of the reservoir is a different color than that over there. Sorry. They're right there. Um, I, I think this shock was replaced probably because they either landed really funny and, bu uh, and bent this or something. Or they didn't just rebuild it. Um, so that's why if, this is pretty much all the wear. There's like no wear there. So this one doesn't really need it. But obviously it's going to look ugly if I don't do it. And I might as well do it because I'm, I'm already doing it anyway. So uh, yeah, that's basically it there. Um... Got new, got uh, got the new spring divider uh, for this as well. Um, so yeah, uh, the shock sleeve will slip over it. This one's a bit of a tighter fit, probably because it's not as worn as the shock over there. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be more of a press fit. We're gonna use uh, JB Weld um, for a, the epoxy. We're probably gonna use minimal amount. I'll obviously tell you guys that after we are uh, all done with that. But we're probably gonna have to hit this uh, since we still have the shaft here. We're still gonna have to hit this with like a piece of uh, like a piece of two by four or whatever, um, because this is gonna be uh, kind of a tight fit. Here, I'll show you guys right now. Uh, just give me a sec so I can uh, set the camera to show you guys. Or uh, let me put this on. All right. So you can, as you guys can see here, it's a little hard because I'm one handed right now. But you can see it's slipped over part way there. It'll slip in more, but um, I'm not going to because it'll get a little bit snagged up. And I don't want to have to take this off again. But uh, you guys, could, you, I think you guys get the point there. It's pr it's a pretty good fit, as you guys can see there. So pretty good fit. Um, it's gonna. T I think it's gonna turn out really good. Um, by the way, if you uh, want the dimensions of these, um, these are uh, gonna be twenty. Do I did uh, nine inches? Sorry, nine inches tall. And I use these mandrels here. So I used. Uh, they're missing right now because they're over there. So I used 61, 62, and sixty three. Um, uh, the reason um sixty four has got that. Uh, here I'll tell you. Actually, I'll tell you about that right now. Um, all of the mandrels except 61 has a, uh, taper to it to give it a more of a easier push through. And, uh, the re and we did that because it'll e obviously easily push, uh, make a, a line more easy. Sorry, I should just say that. It'll align it easier and go through nicer. Um, also, we also have done, uh, we've bored these out because these are normally, um, this big. You can see there. So we had to bore them out to that. And uh, so we poured those out so it fit through the all thread. Uh, I will see you when uh, everything is on. All right, guys, a few days have passed and they are all done. JB Weld should be dry. Um, now I'm just going to clean the shocks, um, clean the threads really well, clean everything uh, decently well with like some brake clean or something. And then uh, I'm going to throw them on the machine and uh, I guess I'll get back to you guys when that is done. Alright guys, well I think I'm going to call it on the video, um, I think this is uh, about long enough for you guys, because um, this is all you guys are on this video for, is the sleeves. Um, so yeah, I got this shock adjusted for uh, what it should be for my ride height, um, not that that matters in this video, but I thought I'd say it anyway. Um, so yeah, that's it for that, um, this shock I need to do next, but um, I will not be recording that because... It doesn't really matter for you guys. Cause it's all, you, all you guys came for was that sleeve right there. But there you go. This is what it looks like on the machine. 
I will have uh, pictures posted on the Razor forums. I'll make sure to um, put a link there when I do post pictures when it's on the machine. But uh, yeah, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.